Today on At Your Service, we will learn how Anne Arundel County Public Schools is supporting students, schools, and families in a positive and proactive approach which fosters high levels of academic achievement. Welcome to the show today. So can you introduce yourself? This is your special guest today and we just want the audience to know a little bit about you. Sure. I am Maisha Gillens. I'm the Executive Director for Equity and Accelerated Student Achievement. I started working in Anne Arundel County Public Schools in 1997, where I was a middle school math teacher at Wiley H. Bates Middle School. Loved it. <laughs> During my tenure, since I've been here in Anne Arundel County Public Schools, I have been an assistant principal at mm -hmm. Annapolis Middle School. Mm -hmm. I served mm -hmm. time as the coordinator for Title I. I taught evening high school, summer school. Um, wow. I was a principal at two middle schools in Anne Arundel County. To, uh, was at I was five years at Brooklyn Park Middle mm -hmm. and two years at Severn River Middle. I then became the director of school performance, so I worked with 18 schools in the Old Mill and Northeast clusters as, again, the director of school performance. And so this is my first year in my current position. Oh, that's great. So you definitely have a good cross-sectional across yes. the county. Yes. So what is your role now in Anne Arundel County? Certainly. So in my role as the Executive Director for um, Equity and Accelerate mm -hmm. Student Achievement, we have two offices in my department. We have the Office of Equity, mm -hmm. and it's about three, four of us in the, doing the work of office in the Office of Equity, but we also have the Title I office. In the Title I office, we monitor um, funding, federal funding that goes to schools who are eligible for free meals. So we have schools in our district, mm -hmm. elementary schools, who have high percentages of students who are eligible for free meals. And so we make sure that the money is going obviously towards our students and making sure they're successful academically. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So can I just ask a follow up with the equity or for their Title I office yes. so that the you know the community understands. Yes. So what kind of, with the, the federal funding, is there certain things you're able to purchase for those particular schools? Certainly, mm -hmm. a wide range of things. We're talking personnel to assist with some non-teaching positions, for instance. So we have schools that have what we will call a Title I reading resource teacher or a Title I math teacher. And so the purpose of these individuals would be to provide supports to teachers, but also provide supports to students, whether it be small group teaching that occurs mm -hmm. for students who need it the most, who mm -hmm. are academically struggling. We also can use the money for resources. So mm -hmm. in other words, in Title I schools, we may have schools that need Chromebooks and additional electronic devices to make sure that all students have access to electronic devices. Title I money definitely has to be used for parent involvement. Mm -hmm. Part of Title I funding is to engage parents in their students' learning. So that's okay. a definitely a component to Title I funding. Can you explain what Class 203 and District 203 are? And how do you support, how does Anne County Public Schools support Certainly. that? So um, Class 203 came about several years ago, so my mm -hmm. predecessor really um, brought the notion of Class 203. It's based on a teacher, world-renowned uh -huh. teacher named Erin Gruel. Mm -hmm. She um, taught in an urban school in California. And there were certain tenets or certain attributes that she showed in really meeting the hard to reach student. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, making sure that she knew every single student's story. So knowing the stories of our students is really important. Because sure. mm -hmm. establishing relationship, we know that when students feel as if they have mm -hmm. a caring adult, they will work for you, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, also engaging instruction. So it's not only that I know my learner, I know mm -hmm. how to reach my learner, but providing instruction that's engaging and exciting to encourage students to want to come to school every single day. Another um, tenet that we learned from um, Aaron Gruel's story is a growth mindset. Mm. Not all of our students are there yet, mm -hmm. or even mm -hmm. as adults, we may not be there yet. Right. But it's about giving the tools and that language and our own thinking that I may not be there yet, but let me set goals so I can get myself there. So what we did was we took some tenets as to how she was successful and then brought it to Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Gotcha. So we highlighted different classrooms, those teachers who really were reaching students who were furthest away from meeting standards. And then we say, you know what, why are we focusing on just individual teachers? We need uh -huh. to go school-wide. And now gotcha. we're District 203. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, with your District 203, what does that look like from your office? I know that you talked a little bit about principals' meetings. 
Certainly. But what else does that comprise? Yeah, so my office, they've conducted trainings. We know it's door to door, it's um, curb to curb service. Gotcha. So the first thing our students see are, are bus drivers if, if mm -hmm. they're a bus ride, if they're, uh, if they're if they're transferred to school via bus. Okay. So my office, they've offered professional development to bus drivers in our district. Wow. And it's really about that greeting. When you first see a student, yeah. when they first board your bus, good morning. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a great day. And it makes a difference, right? Yeah. It starts off a young person's day in a very uh -huh. positive manner. Yeah. Um, we've done, my office, they've trained behavior specialists. So mm -hmm. mm. certain schools, they have staff members who are assigned to schools to really um, to motivate students who are challenged behaviorally. Gotcha. We've done curriculum and professional development around District 203 and curriculum and instruction. Mm -hmm. And so we know we have folks in our district who write curriculum, but then our teachers have to implement it. So how do we implement it through the lens of District 203? Again, those tenets of growth mindset, um, be nice is another tenant mm -hmm. we have right. okay. in our district, how we treat one another, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, fostering relationships. So a lot of training in different um, work groups as far as unit of employees. We do offer that. We have offered that. How's and we continue to offer that. That's How's fantastic. the feedback been so far with that? And Certainly. Um, I think the feedback has been very positive. As far as principal meetings, we yeah. do have um, surveys mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. help to give us feedback to improve uh, upon the professional development that we offer. I know that when my team, they've done bus drivers or human resources, mm -hmm. they've gotten verbal feedback. Come okay. back, we love you, we love the work right. that you're doing. My okay. team, they bring a level of very high energy Mm -hmm. to the training, which I think helps yeah. mm -hmm. with when you're delivering training for a group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's, I mean, that's so important. You have to be excited about something that you're going to be yes. starting to really embrace. Yes. So I'm glad that you're getting that right. feedback. And so we had the Office of Equity, you know, present to the school counselors and train the school counselors okay. as well, yes. you know, last year. And I know that continual partnership, and it really does mm -hmm. make a difference. Um, and I know... I don't know if the, the the community understands the idea of equity liaisons. Yes, good question. So to advance the work around equity or District 203, mm -hmm. each school assigns an, an individual, whether it be a classroom teacher or a school counselor, but a, a school-based mm -hmm. person to deliver, or I call advance the work of equity or District 203. Mm -hmm. And again, it's one thing for at the central office level to provide professional development for principals and obviously mm -hmm. they go back to their schools but to have that other support in the building the principal along with the equity liaison mm -hmm. to again to advance the work for teachers to make sure teachers get it but we also have early dismissal days built into our calendar and for those four early dismissal days mm -hmm. it is focused around the work of eliminating the achievement gap okay. and to do that we talk about district 203 and building equity mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. So when you think about the principals and the equity liaisons, are they looking at certain things? Because I would think at every school, their data or their community yeah. would be a little bit different because yeah. we know how you yes. know diverse our, right. our system is. Yeah. So w is that something part of the training? Yes, yeah, so Th thank you very much. Because when we think of diversity, it isn't just by race. Uh -huh. When we talk about diversity in our school system, it's such a wide range of things that uh, we come to the table with, mm -hmm. whether it be varying learning styles, mm -hmm. whether it be our family dynamic is different. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right. So school, really, they need to know their student population and how, how, how it's diverse and to celebrate it. Right. But we definitely look at our data. We look at our data by student groups. Okay. And our student groups definitely would be by race, for sure, mm -hmm. gender, right. right? students who receive special education services. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a specific student group. Students who are eligible for free and reduced meals, that mm -hmm. would be another student group. So again, it isn't just narrow to just race. There are a lot of different factors that make us very different and diverse, and it's the role of the principal and equity liaison is to make sure that we're addressing the needs of all our, our students. Right? Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. Um, can you explain to the audience about why your office has not embraced the book, Building Equity? And I see that you have it there yeah, in front of you. Yeah, so this book, Building Equity, is the basis of our work. And so the reason we have um, embraced this, the book, Building Equity, it really gives us a road map mm -hmm. for us to follow, which mm -hmm. is really nice. We're not um, pulling for straws or mm -hmm. searching for, for something. This is research-based. 
So mm -hmm. the authors of this book, they've done the work, and they're practitioners. They're mm -hmm. currently in a building right. doing the work. So yeah. it isn't a theory. It's, it's, right. it's theory and practice. Right. So the, the equity um, strategies in this book are strategies mm -hmm. that are tried and true and continue to be tried and true, again, at this particular school um, mm -hmm. where the authors are coming from. And they're built on what we call taxonomies. Mm -hmm. And so there are different layers to it. It's looking okay. at physical integration social emotional engagement so again just talking about those two taxonomies it isn't just about race right. when it comes to building equity there it's it's so complex and again we embrace the book because it really gives us a blueprint and a practical mm -hmm. way to approach this mm -hmm. conversation around equity so it won't feel so overwhelming yeah uh -huh. and again just that practical approach to it yeah I found it was interesting when I read the book um, just pieces like social emotional learning yes um, just f in the realm of school counseling yes. and mm -hmm. you know Christy was a school counselor as well yes. and just yes. that's the work that we do so yes. it's really wonderful to see that alignment with yes. instruction and curriculum yes. and the office of school performance yes. it's almost like everything is finally yeah. kind of being integrated yes. yep. and building yes. um, so you know just to support students yes. and families and yes. having that that building that safe and supportive culture because it really comes down to the culture of your building. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you mentioning that or, or how your observation of especially a taxonomy too, social emotional mm -hmm. engagement. When it was time for my office to present to principals, we came to your department mm -hmm. because we're not the experts, right? Mm -hmm. Right. In, in some of the work. And it is a partnership. It is. It isn't just one office that's responsible for the work of equity. It really yeah. is a partnership. And Thank you for student service, student support and services. You guys were all on it saying, yep. We we're like, yeah, yeah we're going to partner here. And it was, it was great. The principals really um, enjoyed seeing the partnership. They didn't see us in different silos. It's all the, right. the offices are working together. Mm -hmm. Again, at the end of the day, we're here for students. Right. And mm -hmm. so it does. We're all we're better together when we do work together. Well, I know I've been very pleased to see that a lot of these books are oh, starting yes. to get spread around <laughs> yeah. to the different departments. Yes. So that's that's a very good sign that we're all on the same page. Yes. And it was nice yes. when you came to leadership. So you're at the school level, but you're also at our leadership meetings yes. where we're discussing yes. the book. And so that everybody's on the same page because yes. it's really that common language. Correct and those tenets of that taxonomy. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's really seeing how people are trying to have that integration right. to help students and families. Yeah. And where do we all fit in, I right? Know. Yeah. Exactly. So some departments may feel it fit in two out of the eight taxonomies, yeah. or one yeah. out of the eight. But mm -hmm. there's a place for everyone, for exactly. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna take a quick break, okay. but we'll be back soon. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Jeannie Porter. Anne Arundel County Public Schools Department of Transportation is raising the level of awareness for the safety of your children as we transport them to and from school. When a school bus stops to load students, as a driver, this is what you will see. At 150 feet, the bus will activate hazard lights. At 100 feet, the bus driver will activate the amber lights. They will start slowing down. At 10 feet before the bus stops, they will turn on the red bus lights. Their stop sign will come out and students will begin to load. Once all students are on board safely, the bus driver will turn off red lights and move forward. At this time, it is safe for the motorist to resume movement. The new kindergarten, first, and second grade curriculums are designed to engage students in a variety of learning opportunities that involve cooperation and problem solving. What do I do? Student discourse and structured play develop social foundations through peer interactions. This learning block promotes curiosity, imaginative thought, and responsiveness. The primary focus is on the work of young children, play. The use of tools and materials allow students to share take turns, and develop the confidence to make effective decisions in school and in life. Ask your child how they interacted with their friends today while engaging in structured play. Hello, we are returning from break with Dr. Gillens from our Equity Office and Ronald County Public Schools. And if you would please talk a little bit about um, 
the two components that you're going to be more applying to uh, Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Could you just elaborate on that if you would, please? Certainly. So definitely the rollout for building equity in the mm -hmm. taxonomies. It's a process. We, there's, we're not able to, it's not realistic to roll out all five at one time because we want to do it well. Mm -hmm. So a slow rollout is the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. So currently, we have definitely focused on the first two taxonomies, which would be physical integration and mm -hmm. social emotional engagement. Okay. And so the book suggests for physical integration, it is critical for teachers to know how diverse their student body is. Again, as we spoke about earlier, diversity takes on um, different um, characteristics, whether I'm, a, I'm diverse in how I learn, I want to learn more kinesthetic, hands-on, et cetera, visual, auditory, mm -hmm. or my interests may be very different than my peers. And so we really focus on, for teachers getting a good handle on, how are my students diverse? But mm -hmm. while we're diverse, there are lots of similarities as well mm -hmm. to really bring us together, right. where we, we may have students who have definitely lots of interests that they did not know. And that may bridge some gaps with some relationships among students. Sure. So we really look at diversity in two different ways. Mm -hmm. What do we have in common? Yep. Because once we find that we have some things in common, that may forge some relationships that weren't there at first mm -hmm. among right. students. And then, and of course, in, in, in reverse, to really celebrate how we are very different. And it's right. okay mm -hmm. to, to have those differences. So that's the physical integration. And focusing also on when you enter a school building or the Board of Education, does it embrace diversity? Do you, can you see yourself in any uh, facility in Anne Arundel County Public mm -hmm. Schools? And does it reflect diversity at large? Not necessarily the diversity if you're thinking of uh, what you see, mm -hmm. for sure, but definitely our, our diverse society at large, when you walk into a building, does it feel very welcoming? Does it mm -hmm. scream, you know, you belong here right. in this building? So we really do focus on that. We also have focused on social emotional engagement, and this is why I say we partnered up with Student Services, where we talked about trauma-informed practices. Mm -hmm. That We have students who come mm -hmm. to us under great trauma we sure yep. do. and then how do we equip teachers to a identify mm -hmm. it and knowing the impact trauma has we um, talked about um, so many instances of, of a student encounters trauma their likelihood to succeed unfortunately it's very um, scary mm -hmm. and so again how do we create that environment mm -hmm. to try to reverse some of it yeah. right or to right. meet a student where they are to a identify the signs and what are some strategies to redirect mm -hmm. or to help to counsel students mm -hmm. who are under a great deal of trauma so that, that's something else we've definitely discussed in those supports, again, from student services. As we continue the work around mm -hmm. equity, we, we certainly will focus on opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. Equity also means that students have an opportunity to be in an advanced placement class, right. to be in yeah. an honors class. That Even though I may be a student that may be squirmy or right. Right. I may not be the popular kid among my right. teachers, but academically I'm very much capable of doing right. it. Right. And so those are the opportunities. We don't want to close the door on students. We really want to look at their gifts, what, mm -hmm. what they can bring to the table. Um, we're going to be talking about instructional excellence. Again, equity is about having a high quality teacher for every single student. Mm -hmm. So again, those are the things we're going to work through. And we do have structures in place. We have a teaching and learning cycle, mm -hmm. which it sets the expectation of what quality teaching and learning <laughs> ought to look like. Mm -hmm. And again, providing and supporting teachers and making sure that we're building their capacity mm -hmm. to make sure that, again, every student yeah. in our district has a high quality teacher. Right. And that's how you close those achievement gaps. Mm -hmm. right? And then engage inspired learnings, learners. For that taxonomy, it's really important for students to come to us really inspired to not only learn and, and maximize their experience mm -hmm. with us, but when they leave us, mm -hmm. right. to be engaged and inspired to do more. Um, we have a philosophy where some schools have what they call kids at hope. Okay. And they mm -hmm. talk about destination. Yes. And mm -hmm. for students to really see beyond mm -hmm. their day today and they're youngsters we know that a lot of students I was middle school so they could just they don't they knew what they're gonna do at lunchtime right that's yeah. all right, they worried right. about but it's our jobs as adults and caring educators to make sure that students see even beyond us what their future is gonna look like there is a future right. for them 
Okay. And so that's kind of the taxonomy, all the taxonomies in a nutshell. And again, mm -hmm. we're going, we use a term called go slow to go fast, yes. right? To make sure we're taking our time right. to do it right. Yes. And to make sure we're digging really deep into right. Um, right. the taxonomies. Otherwise, they're not going to retain the information. Correct. Correct. We all know that. It has to have practice, conditioning right. at least seven times, and then it's, it's going to be fidelity. stuck in there to be Correct. part of your life. Correct. Right. Give that feedback opportunity, mm -hmm. that feedback loop, yeah. right? So when you're trying something, because it may yeah. not be perfect the first time. Nope. Right. <laughs> like you said, right. you know, then the bottom line is for the students that this is impacting, then yes. they in turn. Correct. It'll be a way of life for them. Correct. And these adverse children's goal. experiences, yes. Yes. it doesn't need to be stopped right there. Correct. We can nurture it and feed it to them. So thank you very Correct. much for clarifying all of yes. that. Now, it's, it's, it's a wonderful partnership that mm -hmm. we have with your office and curriculum. Sure. You know, currently we've been training the elementary school teachers as well on the outside with more, in, more trauma-informed strategies. Yeah. So it's really that integration beyond with already receiving at the yeah. schoolhouse and the principals, mm -hmm. they wanted, you know, additional support services. So, yeah. you know, it's been a great partnership yeah. and I think something that's gonna really impact yeah. their ability to learn and feel welcome, yeah. you know, and just how to have those little calming corners in their room yeah. and, mm -hmm. you know, just those yeah. opportunities for yeah. students and thinking about, you know, changing that language and that mindset mm -hmm. instead of, you know, instead of what is wrong is what is happening exactly. with students Correct. or what is happening to that Correct. staff member and Correct. because you know we work with students but we're also people yes. and Correct. so we also have yes. a faculty and a staff yes. that we need to be welcoming yes. and supportive with as well so I think it's a great yes. partnership and it's going to yes. just keep going yes. and building that and I think we're changing culture. the face of equity yes or what we are. people thought equity was mm -hmm. Yes. So when you hear about trauma-informed um, practices, or you hear about if I have a student who's mm -hmm. um, under trauma versus me going, what? Mm -hmm. Versus, I need to know more. Let me get to know right. this learner. Yeah. What, what has, what's happened so right. I can have some wraparound services? I don't think we, thought, we think about equity, but right. that is equity, because I'm is. meeting the individual where they are. Yes. Exactly. And I'm trying to find out more about this individual, mm -hmm. their life, their right. lived experience and they're providing those supports. Exactly. So I really appreciate the conversation because it redefines what right. equity is and what and, it looks like. Right, and we talk right. about cultural identity. Right. And so one of the activities when we had your office come in was do those cultural identity yes. bubbles. And yes. it's just very eye-opening yes. for the staff members to look at what their culture yes. is and then how to share their what's important to them yes. to the other counselors. But then if that's happening at the schoolhouse, right. which I know it is, yes. It's really a learning activity for the teachers yes. as well to see, you know, yes. not everybody experiences the same thing Correct. you do. Yes. And so that's a wonderful yes. lens then yes. they can impart with families yes. and students yes. in the school. And that's really the foundation to the work of equity or any work because right. it's really all about how we approach our work. Mm -hmm. No right. matter what department we're in. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, Maisha Gillens, I'm going to approach it based on my lived experience, yes. which is a different experience than yours, mm -hmm. a different experience than yours. And so we do, we, tr we try to start out professional development sessions, what we talk about the cultural bubble. Exactly. What are these dimensions of identity, whether it be race, family mm -hmm. structure, religion, mm -hmm. yes, right? Ge geography, where was I born? I was born in Los Angeles, California, very different mm -hmm. than yeah. Annapolis, Maryland, right? right? And so I bring all those things. And so if I know my lived experience and the lens mm -hmm. in which I see things, that's gonna help me better understand, well, why am I responding this way? Right, exactly. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't respond this way, or maybe some implicit bias. If we're going to exactly. speak real talk, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. So that, the lived experience influences mm -hmm. that, and mm -hmm. so the, I truly believe if we can acknowledge and recognize those influences, yes. it then it allows us to better understand how we're interacting with the outer world exactly. correctly. And then for me, then to kind of put some breaks and pauses on my, my <laughs> because my values might be a little different. Right, that is correct. That's mine better. Yours I'm is overlaying not. it right. Right. exactly. So let me pull back and not. Yeah. That's so true. Yes. That is so true. Yeah. 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 Good so discussion. we had a little bit of discussion and we've talked a little bit, but can you speak about how your office, you know, we think about family and community supports initiatives. What, what kind of is happening in that area of community supports? For Certainly. Families? So we do have um, employees that are in three of our high schools. They're called community ambassadors. Okay. And 
Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember the date, so forgive me okay, for no not, problem. they've no. been in existence, I'm going to say easily eight, ten years. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, we have, um, and they've been at s uh, select high schools. So right okay. now, three different high schools, we have community ambassadors, and they really are the liaison between the community and the school. So we do have students who, um, let's say, um, have challenges getting to school every day mm -hmm. on time. And in addition to the PPW, people personnel uh -huh. worker, community ambassadors are typically individuals who live in a certain community. Okay. So to knock on someone's door to see them over the weekend, it's yeah. not a stretch, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like, yes. hey, I know you, neighbor. <laughs> right. What's going on with your student? How can we support your student? And so again, they're that liaison between gotcha. the community and the school. And it, it's a different type of relationship yeah. Having had having someone in the community, so if anything is going on over the weekend, let's mm -hmm. say sometimes right. um, our families are in crisis over the weekend, or our students may get in conflict mm -hmm. oh, that may right. then carry on over to the school. That community ambassador can be the individual to be proactive mm -hmm. in hearing about situations and either notifying the school or trying to do some mediation. Mm -hmm. To be honest right. with you, to try to yeah. avoid things, issues happening um, in the school, because we know it will in negatively mm -hmm. impact student learning that right. way. So that's, the, we, we, and we're, um, our intention is to expand um, community ambassadors, those, pers okay. the positions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. And how do you just um, support school leaders and leadership growth? Yeah, so we support, the, um, I mentioned earlier, professional development. Mm -hmm. our, my office, we do okay. a lot of training for um, again, principals, and we have the ECHO liaisons. They do training several times a year as well. Mm -hmm. And we also, I talked about the different offices that we have, we, we have done training around District 203. We do have an annual conference mm -hmm. called Unlocking Our Potential mm -hmm. Conference. And this has been a signature conference for many years, as long as I've been in the, in the district. Mm -hmm. And the conference really, again, it's for principals, assistant principals. Each school gets a um, number of slots, let's say, for, okay, for attendees, right. so your teacher leaders in mm -hmm, your building. Yes. Um, each office at Central Office, they also get um, slots or mm -hmm. number of positions, positions that yeah. they can invite um, to this conference. It's a day-long conference mm -hmm. at Northeast High School. Again, we've been doing it for years. We have signature um, speakers, mm -hmm. um, often, whether it be in county or someone from out of county, who really can speak to the work. Mm -hmm around and again equity is such a larger sure is, yeah. broader yes. term mm -hmm. and so I know Susan mentioned that she's going to be yes, um, presenting at trauma the conference informed. yay yeah. trauma-informed instruction and so again so that's um, another avenue that we provide professional development for our school leaders in the county all right thank you mm -hmm. that's a wonderful opportunity yeah, it sure is. so um, when 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 you're looking for that, that's really where you're trying to grow the grassroots yes. within the school system yes. and shaping, whether it's new teacher leaders, yes. new principals, right. new APs. Yes. And so there's a variety of offices that help support Correct. this um, initiative. It's really interesting because I love elevating all students and, and eliminating all gaps. Yeah. That's one of the, you know, the tags that yeah. right. we use and it really holds true. So. You know, Dr. Gillens, I appreciate the time that you've come this this day to share yes. what your office does because I think it's really important that the community, the students, and yes. the families know yes. mm -hmm. what we what initiatives yes. that we support that yes. is the foundation yes. of student success and dealing with you know career and college readiness. Yes. And so I just wanted to thank the viewers today. Stay tuned for another at your service. The new kindergarten, first, and second grade curriculums are designed to engage students in a variety of learning opportunities that involve collaboration, conversation, and creativity. One learning block that is devoted to movement and healthy minds and bodies supports a cooperative classroom and a feeling of connectedness. In Move, 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 Healthy Minds and Bodies, activities support oral language development and prepare the brain for new information. 
the use of repetition and movement offers an opportunity to review content across various learning blocks. The positive effects of physical activity on the young brain provides a focus and a readiness to learn. Ready? Ask your child how Move, Move, Move helped them learn today. Move, run. Move, run.